okay there we go now I've just remembered to hit record so guys the video on YouTube is going to start from now so um, yeah um, there we go let me just put this in here let me just do another quick intro sorry guys I, I forgot to hit record uh, so guys just a quick intro again tonight we are talking about the history of South African charts we're going to Albert Falls Dam and then we're going to talk to we're going to see some of the comments by some of our uh, pro staff the fish tech pro staff which are some of the best fishermen in the country so let's get back to it right we're going to start off here we're going to go to Albert Falls Dam and there's the badge that I first got. This was one of my very first tournaments that I ever fished for bass. In fact, it was the first bass tournament that I ever um, uh, uh, fished, okay? This was in 1998, okay? There's my little badge. You can see it down on the bottom right-hand side there. Myself and Colleen, uh, you guys who have bought and dealt with uh, fish tech sales, you will know Colleen well. That is my wife. And uh, she also got one of those. And yeah, we didn't quite know what we were doing, but we loved the whole scene behind it. And the, yeah, it was awesome. Anyway, so we, we, we headed off and I think we were boat 300 and something. There were so many boats back in those days. And um, this area that you see here, we arrived and we sort of went out and we saw all these boats sitting out in the middle of, of the dam. And I must be honest with you, I had absolutely no idea what all these boats were doing out there. We went and fished what we normally did. We went over here. You see this area here? We fished this area. We liked this area. I got my, my biggest fish here when I started bass fishing. It was a 3.2 kg. And I, and I thought, that's it. That's, you, you, you don't get more fun than, than that. That was awesome fun okay and we hit these shoreline because we were told uh, you go straight up to the bank and you uh, 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 target the shoreline the weed lines that's where the bass are um, which i found very confusing because uh, as a bank angler before when i went to the dam and i didn't have a boat i'd have my rod and whoever was showing me what to do or whatnot would say right now over there you cast as far as you can into the water and that's what I'd do I would cast as far as I could into the water okay and then we'd wait for a bite that's what what we did then you buy a boat and it's a lot of money and all this and that you go out onto the water now you think you now you're gonna go far and then you told to cast as close to the shore as possible so as you can start to imagine from our, what I'm telling you now how confusing this all got for me but anyway I took the axe advice and lo and behold we did catch fish in the shallows right up against the bank which was wonderful so i thought oh okay that's weird when you're from the bank you cast as far as you can when you're in a boat you cast to the shore okay not going to argue but here we go we arrive at this tournament we've paid our entry fee we're over 300 boats on the water and holy moly look behind me here's these oaks sitting out in the middle of nowhere i was like nah something is not right here so what happened but let me just go back here but what happened here i thought these oaks are going to catch nothing and we're going to win and whatnot guess what guess who who did the best in this tournament all these buggers sitting out in the middle of nowhere they won all the big prizes so that was very frustrating for me so i thought right next year i'm going to go and follow those same boats I'm going to see exactly where they go because I don't know what they're targeting. So I'm going to follow them exactly and I'm going to go and sit in amongst them, in amongst these trees. And because I knew, I went there later and I saw, oh, okay, there's some trees sticking out the water here. That's what these guys are targeting. I thought you went, must go shallow uh, weeds, but apparently these bass are hanging around trees. So I thought, okay, lucky. Ne next time I come back to the dam and fish this tournament, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to target these blooming trees here, uh, wherever, behind me here okay so what happens this goes and happens next tournament colleen and i pitch up we go fish the same tournament and lo and behold that happens now everybody's fishing where we were fishing the previous time we were there and hardly anybody is out in the middle of the dam and i thought now i must be honest now i was confused what is going on here what is going on here why are these boats all of a sudden now fishing where we used to fish and nobody's fishing out in the middle i'm going to roll this back to the previous picture and have a look you'll see the clue now 
okay that's when everyone was fishing the bank the shoreline now watch the shoreline carefully there near murray's farm dead center the, to the screen slightly left that was 1998 can you see what happened the water level was down the water level was down so what happened when the water level was down slightly the, the clue to why everybody was there is in this next screen this is of connor this is my son connor this was 10 years later 10 years later nine years later sorry and here connor was only seven years old okay and um, but look at his beautiful fish this fish he sorry i've got to brag and tell the story here connor caught this beautiful fish casting to the trees with a bream colored norman deal in Okay, he's seven years old. This was the first tournament that happened in uh, KZN for the BET, the Bass Equalizer Tournament Trail. Okay, and within the first hour, Connor caught a 4.330, which he caught. He set the hook and he landed it with my assistance with the net. I was the net boy and we got this fish in and we waded in. And I was so proud of him. It really was a phenomenal story. But anyway, I digress. Look what happened. Let me put my ugly mug on top of that. Sorry, my boy, I'm blocking you out there. But you see behind me here, there's the trick. That's what was happening. That's why all the boats were out there. These boats were targeting the trees. They could see the trees. The water level was down. I'm just going to turn that off. The water level was down. And everybody could now see the trees and the exposed cover timber and they targeted the next year or the next whenever it was when we went back the water level was up a lot of those trees and and, and I know a lot of guys were, were, were cutting off the tops of the trees as well so when the water came up it would hide them and if the guys never couldn't actually see those trees with the naked eye guess what they couldn't fish it because inherently Bass fishermen want to target something they can see with a naked eye. Sure, back then we had basic, I showed you one of these uh, fish finders just, just now, you know, with this, uh, uh, like the LMS 520, very, very uh, um, common unit. The guys loved this, this unit here. Uh, very, very popular, but it was a little bit more, a little more than just a fish finder. It gave you the depth, it gave you the water temperature, and you'd see some fish. If they swam directly underneath the boat so that's what the guys were using when they arrived at these spots but as far as charts go there was just absolutely nothing okay so let me turn that off so i said no 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 there has to be more okay that's just showing roughly where where connor was where he caught that fish i don't know i can't remember exactly if it was there but anyway i've put it it was roughly there okay so I wanted to find out more. At that stage, um, 1998, 1999, 2000, you know, I, I really wanted to find out what was going on. So I started doing some, some research. And guys, I found this chart. A little place where we, we used to go and have a couple of beers and uh, 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 get a bite to eat, a beautiful ice barn here at uh, the Amble Inn. Those who know the dam will know this spot quite well. Um, and I saw they had this beautifully laminated chart and I thought man this is it this is going to reveal the secret to why those fish are there because I worked out charts is the thing okay then I thought yeah but I don't know where this is so anyway I scanned it in and I learned all about Google Earth so what did I do I created an image overlay in Google Earth with the transparency and I could manipulate the image to sort of line up with the shoreline and roughly the the uh, um, dam wall and the pt's are a lake sort of area and i ended up with that now as you can see it says center trees you can see there's an island there but it looks like that island sort of extends all the way across to west street you see that road that runs from bellevue right across there to from the left side of your screen all the way up to the top right okay there we go that's where uh that's that's west street okay but I felt, no man, there's, there's just not enough information here. I've got to find more information. Because these guys 
we're here for a reason. It can't just be the timber. There's got to be more to it. Because remember, the timber is your uh, uh, cover, but I wanted to know more about the structure. And the charts that we had available, that Amberlin chart, was just not enough. So I went and I did more surgery. So anyway, but what I did then was, sorry, I forgot to tell you this part, is I overlaid where those guys were. And if you overlay where they were, you can see where they were. Okay, the ridge down the bottom of your screen, slightly off to the left, that makes sense. The chart is 100% there. You can see that's the old ridge. You know why the guys are there. Uh, the center trees makes sense. You know why they're there. But those little dots on the left, guys said to me, that's Tim's trees. And I did go there and I saw trees there. And I thought, but why isn't the chart showing this better? So anyway, I, I wasn't happy with this chart. So then I went and got my hands on the um, Department of Water Affairs paper charts. And guys, I must be honest, look, there was a lot more information. It showed where all the vegetation fields were, showed where the roads were, the tracks, uh, the old uh, caravan park, the swimming pool, all that type of thing. But this area that was known as Tim's Trees, if you look at this here, this is still a mystery. Okay, this is still a mystery. So, then I heard about this chart. Now, let me tell you, this is where I started getting excited. I heard that Garmin had a chart out that you could put onto your Garmin unit, onto the chart plotter, and you can go onto the water and you'll have a chart of Albert Falls. This was very exciting. So what did I do? I bought that chart, waterways, I bought the waterways chart, I bought a Garmin chart plotter, super excited. Next available opportunity I had, I hit the, the, the road off to Albert Falls and boom, we're back there again. And I was like, no man, there's no way center trees just extends as a single island right across over to uh, Tim's trees. And I'll tell you why I say that. Because when I took a drive over there and I looked at my finder, it was up, down, up, down. There was humps and bumps and all sorts of things. This chart was not right. The Department of Water Affairs chart is not right. The Amble End chart is not right. Center trees, yes. Ridge, yes. This um, Tim's trees towards center trees, no. It was not correct. Okay, so what happened? I thought, no, nah, this, this is not working for me. So what did I do? I found out about a program called Dr. Depth. I got my hands on this Dr. Depth program and I learned with my Lawrence unit, you could do it with a Lawrence or a Hummingbird, but only with a Lawrence or a Hummingbird, you could go out and you could record the logs, you could put it into Dr. Depth and it would create a chart for you. Back then it was called an LCM, a Lawrence chart map, okay? Um, and it gave you this blue sort of background and it gave you these defined contours. Now guys, this is when I realized this is working. Because if you look at that, if what was center, uh, center trees, there's our center trees, and there's Tim's trees. Now it's starting to look right, okay? That's Tim's trees. Now I, now I knew I was onto something. For the first time in South Africa, I believed that I had an accurate one foot contour. Yes, way back then. Many, many, many. It's 2020 now. This was many years ago. I worked out. Ah, uh -uh, here we go. This was around that 2007. Yeah, this was around 2007 that I worked this out. 2008, sorry. 2008. I, I created these charts and now I knew, now I was onto something and these are accurate charts. And I tell you what, my terrible fishing capabilities, I'll be the first to admit it, this was starting to help me with these charts. But the best part was, it wasn't just something you showed on a computer. I could overlay, let me just show that. Sorry, I forgot about that slide. I could overlay exactly where all those boats were sitting. So now you can see exactly why those boats were sitting on that spot. 
but you could put it onto your Lawrence unit and it was custom one foot contours back in 2008 on a Lawrence unit. Now guys, I can't even begin to tell you how exciting that was for me. And I can tell you there were very few guys that even knew what I was on about. One of the guys that caught on quite quickly was Martin de Kock. He caught on very quickly what was going on here and he thought, uh -uh, these charts have got value and he made sure he got his hands on a copy of this very very early in those days and yeah we know what a good fisherman he is okay um this here is the uh let me just show you quickly this is the you can buy this chart from lawrence sa from any one of your local south african uh, lawrence dealers it's called the SA Inland Chart. It sells for about 600 Rand. Um, <clears throat> it was data that was derived from the old sediment charts, digitally converted by a company called Map IT. And then, um, I don't know how it got from Map IT. It then, I don't know, Lawrence South Africa had a contact in it, and that data was then put onto a chip. And now we have this. Uh, Lawrence SA chart and there's about 40 dams on there with I think most of them have got contours uh, which is great but here is the problem where's Tim's trees let's just go back there's your Tim's trees if you look on the left side of that LCX 37 C there you can see Tim's trees and some all sorts of things up in the middle top of the page there's something going on there and then when we go here, it's it's not there. Now, guys, this is why I'm reluctant to use these charts as an accurate source of contour data for any dam that you're on. Some dams are better than, than others. I will admit that. But beware. Beware. Just know what you're getting. It, it's not actual sonar survey data as what this is this here is actual sonar survey data where a boat was driven up and down okay back in those days it was sort of willy-nilly all over the place i must admit and the data was collected and it built uh, 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 this these contour charts so so that's great so anyway so that's the problem that we had with that chart so it didn't really help in this case here but then the LCM format changed when the HDS units got launched. And I'm sure you guys will remember when the, when the HDS units got launched around that 2009 mark, the old generation one. And when they did that, I think it was around about software version 3.5, they released a new mapping format. And it's one of the own formats called uh, AT5, Alpha Tango 5. And with Alpha Tango 5, the 85 format, we could start putting in colors. Now that just made life so much easier than just the lines with the blue background. So very, very exciting stuff. So now you could see exactly what was going on. And as you could see, there's a vast difference between what is really going on. And okay, this we can't view on the Lawrence units or any units. This you could only view on the computer. This is a 3D view using, uh, this was Dr. Depth that I did this with. But I could sit at home on my computer and get that 3D feel of exactly what I was targeting and what I was fishing. And guys, this, what you see behind, well, what you see on, the, on your screen now, this is what got fish tech going this is how fish tech got started we were not lawrence dealers back then we were just fish tech we had sonar mapping solutions and we sold some charts <clears throat> and this started changing the way people fish in a big big way so if you <clears throat> let me see if i can put this up here i'm going to zoom in here just so you can see roughly what it looks like today um oh you can't see see i forgot to do that again okay that's what you got there now you've got all these charts if you look down uh the right hand side of your page here um to my there 
Those are all charts from the Elevation Mosaic, Ultra HF, Sediment, Sediment Satellite Mosaic. Guys, there's a long, long list of different charts on a single chip. You don't have to have one chip for each chart. You've got multiple charts on a single chip, and that really, really makes a, di a big difference. So when you look at something like this, let's go to this area in question. You can see why it is such a phenomenal fishery. This, I think this satellite imagery was around about 20, 2016, if I remember correctly. And if you look at the contour data, you can also now see for the whole dam, you can see exactly why it is such a phenomenal area to fish, which I'm going to touch on again a little bit later. But first, before we do that, ah, enjoy a little bit of Albert Falls background picture there. There we go. I mean, geez, imagine if we were there now, guys. Hey, what would you guys give to be on the water here right now? That water level must be coming up. I see that water coming out of Midmar. It's feeding into Albert Falls big time. We need somebody to go and have a little look for us there. And see what's what's going on but anyway um right guys so i'm going to go into more detail obviously about this area to show where the charts have come from i've just shown you what what's happened to the charts from a contour perspective okay but we we're gonna see what the pro staff have said we're gonna go into that segment of the uh, evening where we're gonna see where they not where they go but what they like to target and then we're going to come back to this again and show you what else um, we, we can do with this area. What's on the fish tech charts on the on a typical fish tech HD chart? Okay, now I'm just going to merge that into there. Right, let me just see if there's anybody there. Um, uh, Paul Vermeulen's there. Richard's there. Hey, Richard. Paul Vermeulen, Thomas, Luke. Barry Henko, Wayne Easton, he says that Dr. Dev Scan is amazing. Yes, and Wayne, it's been out for so many years. So, so, so many years. Eh? Um, uh, Michael Cannon says Albert Falls at 43%. Awesome, so it's coming. Holy smokes. It, M Michael says Inand is at 90.17. Can you believe that? Guys, you, uh, I, I tell you what. I need to sneak out and get to the dam. <laughs> I wish I could get to the dam. I wish we can all go to the dam. Oh, they've got to get over this BS19. Quick, quick now. Anyway, let's have a look. Brian LePan, what I did was I contacted my uh, pro staffers and my brand ambassadors. And I said to them, guys, put yourself in this scenario. It's, um, let me just put this on here so you can see me. I said, put yourself in this scenario. Uh, you're fishing the Albert Falls tournament or a nationals or a whatever. Uh, it's a two day event. The first day, uh, bright eyed, bushy tailed, everybody goes out, boom, 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 boom. Second day, too much pressure on the water and the bite shuts down. What do you do? Now, these are the comments from guys that know what's going on. So pay close attention to what you're going to see here now. So I'll turn myself off. Brian LePan says, I will pull out uh, to approximately 15 foot first and fish the areas I've marked on my fish tech charts. There we go. Uh, these areas will have a combination of timber and rock. Okay. Remember that. Timber and rock or just a hard rocky bottom. Now, guys, you're going to hear this hard rocky bottom quite a bit from these comments. So I hope you guys are paying attention to this. I will fish a combination um, uh, with a combination of baits and rigs, a striking 3XD or 5XD, a Ned rig on a light line, Z-Man TRDZ, a hula sticks, a drop shot missile baby destroyer, and a Vike tungsten swinging football head with a missile baits big destroyer. Okay, now, obviously, since my fishing... Uh, tournament days uh, tackle and baits has come a long way and i can tell you guys bass warehouse and what brian Le Pen and and his uh, uh, pro staff guys and uh, uh, brand ambassadors have done for 
these amazing amazing products Gugun, uh, Z-Man, Missile, uh, Pesca Rods, uh, Lose Reels you, you, you've got to go and visit their, their store it really uh, they're on top of their game I tell you what I, I, I think buying from them is, is like going getting on a plane going to the states buying the top of the range goods getting on a plane and coming back but you can do it right here and uh, online and have it uh, shipped anywhere in South Africa they're just up the road here in, in Hillcrest so guys pop into Bass Warehouse and, and have a chat to these guys give Brian a shot he knows what he's talking about um next the, it's the, okay this just comes up randomly freddie stain isn't a local but he's on our pro tier team so he is a very very good angler he doesn't have much experience on uh albert falls but he has been here he has fished it in the nationals as he said here and he's and, and let's just read what he said when we were fishing the saba national during august last year the second day bite was a bit tougher and found that the fish was reacting to two types of baits Smaller baits like a Senko and lighter line, and funny enough, a Carolina rig with small paddle tail. Uh, probably the tungsten dragging through the stumps made the bass to react. Okay, the stumps, so you're going to look for stump fields. Okay, you look at your charts, you look at your sediment, it'll tell you where the fields were. You change over to your mosaics and your ultra HFs, and it'll show you exactly where those stumps are. You can also look at your aerial HD. Your aerial HD, when the dam was very low, is your drone footage. You can see exactly where those stumps are. You know exactly where, where to target them. So there we go. There we go. Um, um, on Albert Falls, I just covered the same spots and I found f uh, spots that I found fish in practice and not reinventing the wheel when it gets tough. Mindset is probably the most important thing. The fish are still there, he says in inverted commas. The depth changed to about three feet deeper. Boom, there we go. Remember that? They went slightly deeper. Three feet, he said, but only three feet. Okay, nice. But find the bass move in and out of an area. So timing comes into play. You'll hear that again from some of the other guys structure of stumps and long ledges cheers freddie freddie thank you very much for that so there's some great information from from freddie how are we doing time wise hey it's going to blim and fast i must speed this up jacques come on okay jacques and Corneille, the bass couple they're a they're a, a sponsor of one of the prizes tonight they have sponsored a thousand rand yes a thousand rand towards the winner of the lucky draw tonight Jacques and Corneille thank you very much for that um, uh, I, I can't wait to get to that uh, anyway he says um, when I'm fishing the Albert Falls uh, tournament and on day two the bite shuts down this is my go-to technique uh, to get those tough bites with he uses a, a net rig with a fluke style bait and a drop shot with a zoom sea tail in 10 to 15 feet of water targeting small ledges or rock that is on the Albert Falls HD mosaic and HD aerial chart there we go you see that guys there's that there's that 10 to 15 again uh small ledges rock you see again boom boom okay these things are repeating themselves so i hope you guys are, are taking notes and paying attention here yapi buerta he's also won uh nationals i think it was on clan william some years back um um he says what I'll do on day two when the bite shuts down, I've got isolated structure. So it's isolated structure where the fish might be holding, depending on the specific time and what I found on day one. So he's using information he's got from day one to be more productive. In the past, around August, September, this is when the uh, Albert Force tournament is typically on, it has been uh, tree stumps or isolated rocks in 12 to 15 feet or shallower isolated flooded grass. I haven't been to Albert Falls lately, but what but what has worked for me was a drop shot type of presentation with finesse worms or junior flukes guys can you start drawing parallel lines by now some really great information yapi thank you very much for that okay martin de Kock, what does he tell us simple boy keep it simple look at this go to is a weightless yamamoto d shared and a five inch senko weightless dead stick 10 to 12 feet range in harder bottom sections guys pay close attention to what he says there about the harder bottoms he says they're visible on the fish tech charts and use Lawrence down in side scan to locate seasonal structure changes like submerged wheat lines remember when I go and scan with side scan or whatever the weed line is not necessarily always going to be in the same place as it gets deeper or shallower or whatever it's going to change so what he's saying is identify key structure 
uh, on the charts, then go and scan the weed lines. If you know you want to target the weed lines, and I know he said this many times before, scan those weed lines and target those weed lines. And we all know Martin knows how to do it, boy. Right, Michael Cannon. Here we go. Michael says, when I'm fishing the Old Falls uh, Bass Tournament on day two, the bite shuts down. I would typically downsize my bait, namely a weightless sinker from 5 inch to 4 inch, as well as downsize my line from 12 to 10 pound. I would then target areas just off where the fish came out the previous day, looking for isolated cover structure that most people would overlook. There we go. A lot of people are just looking at the big obvious stuff. They're not looking at the finer detail. I would achieve this with the use of my fish tech charts and Lawrence finders. I would slow down my retrieve, and if the fish were in four to five foot in day one, I would either stick to that depth in and around where I caught them, or most likely have to pull back and slow down in six to eight feet. So Michael Cannon goes slightly shallower, and I know he does. Um, but again, it's that three, three foot, two to three foot deeper jump okay with the above being the most uh, sensible technique you won't catch me without a, a reaction bait tied on like a kvd 2.5 square ball or striking red eye shad for an occasional cast to try to get a reaction bite at this time of year so that is some very key information and i know those baits have done some oh, hectic damage on uh, albert fall so yeah great information thanks uh, mark uh, Ricky Main, he says, uh, John, uh, day two is always a bit harder and we usually find ourselves slowing it right down, fishing deeper secondary spots, which in the past was a bit difficult to find and mark. With fish tech charts, it has greatly improved my success rate in finding and catching a lot more fish. We, we go to the charts the night before and mark all the secondary locations that are close by to our primary spots. And more often than not, we locate the more pressured fish that are holding there fantastic advice good advice and it works for these guys these guys do very well in the tournaments as well particularly in the joeys thank you for that ricky great information robbie olafia robbie says personally i prefer to fish for pre and post spawn fish simply they are just more, more inclined to feed and some of those pre-spawn females can be really big if you can find the right intersection areas of fish moving from the main lake to the spawning areas, it can turn out to be an awesome day for you as they tend to group up instead of fishing for a fish on a bed that might or might not bite. Day one, I would definitely try to get any share of the good fish in the community areas, including spawning or bedding fish. Day two is always where the challenge lies and a lot of the fish have all seen so many baits. My plan would be condition based. Remember that guys, conditions based. Uh, targeting pre-spawn uh, fish in 8 to 12 feet that are moving in uh, is key in finding areas in the key uh, finding areas and highways and highways fish move along so you can always have fresh fish coming to you depending on how my morning went i would uh, either stay in an area waiting for the fish to move in or two go to the rotate and rotate high percentage staging areas a thing from 5 to 12 feet picking fish off as they move in the baits would be dependent on the spot. Rocks will definitely be where I will crank and use some kind of plastic bait. Flats and humps is where I'm going to pick up my lipless crank bait and jerk bait. Points I predominantly will be using a soft plastic with the occasional cast with a, a reaction bait. As the water temperature heats up and fish tend to move up shallow, I have a decent bag. I will go to the areas that I know or have found fish spawning to see if I can catch a big one or two off the beds, which is exactly what happened for me at the end of each day of nationals, giving me an upgrade or two. Wow, there's a lot of good information. So guys, you're going to have to break that down a bit because there's good and it's very detailed information. And I can just see as I'm reading it, I can just see key information key information key in information which so many people uh, like so many people miss things in a chart so many people will miss uh reading this here uh dunvia dunaramjuan hey dunvia he says senko is working magic in the alberts river so i'm guessing it would do some damage at the main dam after lock lockdown yes yeah i'm i'm sure it will i uh, i hope uh, we all get out on on the water soon dunvia and you can give us some feedback. Give that, definitely give that a bash. And if you don't mind, give us some feedback on that. So, right, guys, that's what we've got from uh, the written. The, these came into me as um, uh, uh, text messages. 
And the other two guys was Alistair Moore's Pitt and um, Brendan Van Zadam. I'm going to play you the video because it was an audio. So I've just turned it into a video. Here we go. Listen carefully to what the guys say. John Alistair from Team Pesca Pro Series. Uh, regarding the Albert Falls Bass Classic, um, we have actually managed to fish it last year and did quite nicely. Um, day two was actually one of our better days. We got our better fish. There was a massive storm, but those fish were more moving from spawn into post-spawn. So we got some spawners, but a lot of them were post-spawn. Eight to ten foot. Um, using our charts, we found some isolated anthills and drop-offs and the better fish were sitting on those we were catching them on mojo rigs um, in the deeper water with the paddle tail on the back um, and then in the eight to ten foot range we were just fishing a weightless fluke uh, letting it sink right down um, and eventually getting the the bite on the on the drop most of the time so yeah eight to ten foot range um post spawn fish so very slow but yeah they were they were eating that that pattern quite nicely um, we actually managed to get 17 point something kilos over the two days there in, f in fifth place um, that was also using the elevation charts up the left hand um, river river section of Albert Falls um, finding those old weed lines and those um, those antils Yeah, my name is Brendan van Zaden. When I fish the Albert Falls tournament, um, I normally fish it, if I stop over there, two ways. Sometimes I decide to focus, if I'm doing it with a, a kid or, you know, some newcomer, and we're not technically going for a big bag, but we go for the big fish. Um, or, if we do start and we get a big bag coming our way, then obviously it's a different way to handle it. Um, sometimes I do fish for the big bag. I did uh, once win it with Gavin Richardson. Um, we won the bag uh, on the Albert Falls tournament, biggest bag. Um, so in all my years of doing this, I've handled it two different ways, depending on what I'm going for. Also, if it's, a, you know, the water's coming down, uh, which normally is falling at Albert Falls tournament time, if it's up, a little bit different thing but generally um, the bite gets tough I tend to go the mid depth maybe around the 12 foot uh, range um, plus minus uh, if you either at that stage in contention to win it or not um, so I generally fish bigger baits um, Carolina rig gets a bit tough you're a little bit tired so to drag a Carolina rig around um mojo uh jig has been a big one tend to leave the uh, spinner baits and top waters behind but we fish deeper and slower slow is a big key um hopefully in the spots that have been favorable to fish that are where it's been coming out look at the depth finder find a bit of rock find an old brush pile find some type of timber drop off any one of those type of things along the ridge um, it's a very favorable spot first that drop off where new fish that haven't been caught and moved up uh, you get one or two that may still move up drop your line size maybe a bit um, because the bites got tougher fish a lot more slower a lot more method methodical um, you know that spots produced obviously in the tournament otherwise you're running really spots that people don't know about and there's not too many of those so you look at the charts you have a good understanding where the fish are coming going for uh, going to moving up and then generally fish the spot within the spot and try and pick each little rock little drop little thing apart and uh, if you get that bite make sure you set the hook properly because that's what changes the outcome of tournaments thanks Right, guys, there, there you have it. Some great information. I'm going to be putting this video onto YouTube later tonight or tomorrow. 
So yeah, uh, you can rewind and make notes and whatnot. I strongly recommend that, that you do that. I'm going to tell you my story, okay? We're not all great fishermen like what my pro staff are. These are really good fishermen. But let me tell you a story what happened to me as, let's call me a hacker that likes gadgets, okay? I love electronics. I love the whole, I love the whole idea of building my own charts and all that type of thing. I think I was, let, let's be honest, I think I'm, I was more, no, I know for a fact, I was more interested in that than, than the fishing. I love fishing. But this really intrigued me, the whole cartography side and building these accurate charts. But when I created my own charts, I want to just show you what, what actually happened here. Okay, here's this 3D view. Okay, um, when, I, when I came practicing, this was a, uh, the Albert Falls where myself and a, a buddy of mine, we actually um, fished this together. He'd only fished a couple of times before, I, I must be honest, um, with old Adrian. And before the tournament, I went to this area. It was the steep drop-off ledge area of uh, center trees, as you can see there. And when I was coming down there with my deep diving crankbaits, I was picking up some really, really good fish. I was picking up all sorts of fish in various spots all over the dam. But this area here, I, I got two very, very good fish that I wish I could have caught during the tournament. But anyway, but I knew the fish were here. So that, to me, was where I wanted to get. Came, you know, come tournament day. Come tournament day, we get there, and then let me show you what happens. <clears throat> Sorry, I've just got to move this here. That's what happens. Okay, this is my screenshot from, that I used earlier, but this happened. Everybody was sitting on top of my spot. I couldn't, because you've got to keep casting distance and whatnot, and I... These guys were literally sitting right on top of where I needed to be. So if I point to that, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. There. These guys here, you see these guys here? They were sitting exactly on my line and casting, I mean, on my line that I was going to troll through with, uh, with my crankbaits to pick up those fish. So, unfortunately, my plans for for the tournament was absolutely destroyed, okay? And I, I must admit, I was really, really sad about that and our fishing, but I knew, I saw the guys were actually starting to, to, to battle, okay? I, I then realized these fish are moving, but where did they move? And guys, I found out where they moved. They moved to this little spot here. And if you look at the depth, Listen to what my pro staff was, was saying earlier. They were saying they went a couple of feet deeper. And this is only a couple of feet deeper, but it's the next ledge. So obviously a lot of those fish, where all those boats are just packed one on top of each other for, for, for a day. And well, this was by about one o'clock where we found these fish on the second day. And, and this spot that's highlighted in blue here, there was nobody here. Nobody because nobody had charts. I was the only person that had a chart for this area. So, and there was nobody here. So, so we came through here with our crankbaits and we found the fish. But I, I wanna give you some information on that spot. If you look at this spot here, if you go onto your Fishtech HD charts, you'll see there's uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of these photographs that you can view on your finder. If you look at this particular one, if you look in the distance, there's the original ledge where all the boats were sitting on top of, but you see the second blue line? That is where the fish had actually moved to, onto this spot here. And I can tell you guys, I tell you what, it was the most fun I've had in fishing for ages because they just sat in that pocket. And every time we turned around and came through this pocket, and we were pulling a combination of these. The DD-22, there's the, the DD-22 Bumblebee. Sorry, the, the color thing is playing around with it. But it's a Norman DD-22. Would It was banging really hard in the shallower water. Let me just roll the video back a little bit so you can see the sort of depth that we were in. 
You see there, we're sort of in that 30 there behind my head, there, in that pocket. You see that pocket there? And if I could get this DD22 to come off the ledge, off that side there, and then come across and duck into that little hole where they were sitting, and, and get as close to that uh, sharp ledge, this bait would really do the job. My mates, uh, Adrian, I'm telling you, if he landed that first fish he hooked, it would have been chosen by, we would have taken that thing. You can, uh, we also pulled the uh, shallower deal in, it went, but it's a completely smaller profile, but uh, um, this one didn't get too many bigger fish, but this did well as well. It's the DD22 body, but it's got the slightly shallower, smaller bill. Also, Bumblebee DLN. That's what we were using. And I tell you what, guys, we would go through there and we, we just had so much fun. It was unbelievable. We were culling two and a half, 2.7, 2.8 kg fish. It, it was just so much fun. Okay, it caused a little bit of a ruckus, but um, it was fun. It really and truly was fun. Right, let's get into... Um, we are going to do the draw. How are we doing time-wise? 52. Yes, we've got to do the draw quickly. Right. Guys, we've got... We had the lockdown um, uh, lucky draw that we announced. And we we said for every chart that we sell, um, you get a, a, a chance to win a thousand rand cash, thanks to the bass couple. You get to win uh, a cap like this, similar to this, um, uh, sponsored by Lauren South Africa, Liz Plots. Thank you for that. Uh, you get a morning on Albert Falls with Zane Habib. He's got a fully tricked out boat. It's got all the bells and whistles. Absolutely stunning, stunning boat. The guy's a local. He knows the water. He's caught some beautiful fish there in the Joey's tournament. Nice guy. Man, he... He's not going to tell you I know everything. He's going to tell you I'm learning the game like the rest of you. But let's go and learn together. And you'll get the experience of all the bells and whistles on his boat. So that is also a fantastic prize. Thank you very much, Zane, for that. Uh, other prize that we've got. Um, we as Fish Tech, we are going to give you a chart of your choice. So any one of our uh, single dam uh, uh, charts worth 3,400 Rand. You can choose any one you want, and we're going to send that with the chart that you originally uh, bought, because we haven't sent off any of the charts yet. We're waiting for this draw tonight. So whoever wins, you're going to get an extra chart of your choice, any one uh, up to 3,400 Rand, single uh, damn chart. And um, we're also going to do the delivery free of charge. So guys, here's the 27 names. I have no idea who's who. I'm not going to look. I don't know if you can see. Am I cheating? I'm going to draw a name out. I don't know if this is one or two. Is that one or two? Who's there? That's just one. Okay, there we go. Right, we're about to announce the winner. The winner of this awesome prize were three, four, 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 four and a half. Woo! There it is. And he's not even here tonight, Freddy Bugger. Andy, you are the winner of the chart. Congratulations. So guys, there's our winner. I can never say surname. Andy Kariakudas. I hope I said it right, Andy. Anyway, guys, that's our winner of the prize. Thank you to everybody who sponsored the prize. Um, let's just finish off with a fresh look of the dam and turn... That's all you need now is two of me. Okay, there we go. So um, everybody that joined me tonight, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I see we had a really good uh, uh, bunch of guys with us tonight. There were 49 of you. Um, please join me next. Uh, when am I going to do a show again? You know, I might do another show next week, but I don't know. Let me not. Don't, don't hold me to it. I might not. Um because we are sort of back open, sort of. Uh, I'm not allowed on the water yet. We can't get into the various resorts, so I can't carry on with the mapping. We're not allowed out of our various uh, um, uh, provinces. Uh, yeah, we don't know when that, that's going to be. So really, 
um so guys um let's see what what happens let let's save it for for june hopefully we got some really exciting news and we're back on the water and yeah that'll be great so everybody that joined me tonight ah there's andy he did join us there he is i'm here <laughs> congratulations <laughs> andy uh colleen will send off your goodies and your cap and uh you'll get a thousand rand back on the chart that you bought and yeah so well done well done um so guys i look forward to seeing you all uh next week i mean next month <laughs> in june and guys please uh try and stay sane try and do a better job than me because i'm honestly losing my mind i really and truly am I've, I've never seen such madness in my life anyway i i I'd never thought i'd see something like this but let's just hope somebody gets some some oxygen in in here and and things come right <laughs> guys uh take care look after yourselves look after your families and i really really from the bottom of my heart i hope your businesses can stay afloat in these ridiculous absolutely ridiculous times guys take care look after yourselves